ladies, how are you doing today? I hope that you're doing amazing and fantastic and wonderful. I am so excited that it's almost June. It is so, so, so flipping exciting for me because technically uh, school is over for teachers and students. I work until June 6th and then I'm off for the summer and then I have so, so, so many plans for this summer and my content and things that I'm coming out with like I'm not taking a summer break I am going to be finishing my book and I'm going to be uh finishing up a draft of a new series that I started and I'm gonna be building a super secret project that I have already drafted and I am so flipping excited about but Today, hello Miss Cleo. Today I am talking to you guys about the Cozy Escape book club choices for June. And the uh the theme of the month is bookish. And I found three books that I think are like really really good in the different realms of what bookish can be when it comes to uh cozy mysteries. So Without further ado, let's dive into the first book that I have chosen for this. Now remember, you can go onto the Patreon and vote for your choice. Remember, book club is completely free. You never have to pay for anything in book club. If you want to join one of those tiers to help support um, my bookish habits and things like that, then you are more than welcome to join a tier. But um, I uh, always want to make sure that you guys know that book club is completely free. All right. Let's dive in. The very first book I have is um, a read em and eat mystery series. It is Well Read Then Dead by Terry Farley Moron. Moran, I think, Moron. Um, one, I love that cover. That cover just screams bookish. It's just freaking adorable. So let's read the synopsis. Nestled in the barrier islands of Florida's Gulf Coast, Fort Myers Beach is home to Mary Sassy Cabot and Bridget Mayfield, owners of the bookstore cafe Read <laughs> Read 'em and Eat. <laughs> but when they're not dishing about books or serving up scones, Sassy and Bridgie, that is adorable, Sassy and Bridgie are keeping tabs on hard-boiled murder. Read and Eat is known for its delicious breakfasts and lunch treats, along with a colorful clientele. If it's not Rowena uh, Gustafsons loudly debating the merits of the current book club selection, it's Miss Augusta Maddox lecturing tourists on the rumors of sunken treasure among the islands. It's no wonder Sassy's favorite is Delia Batson, a regular at the Emily Dickinson table. Augusta's cousin and best friend Delia is painfully shy, which makes the news of her murder all the more shocking. Mmm. Okay, just the, the cover itself. Like, I just want to live there and I just kind of want to, like, just sit and read. But that also is the case for this next book as well. It is the first in a book collection mystery series by Victoria Abbott and it is called The Christie Curse. Now, this has been on my TBR for a little while. Like, it's it's been there. So, I'm all about it. And come on, Agatha Christie, like, how can you not? Okay. Um, in 1926, Agatha Christie disappeared, making headlines across the world, only to show up 11 days later at a spa under an assumed name. During those 11 days, did she have time to write a play? Jordan Kelly needs a new job and a new place to live. She's back in Harrison Falls, New York, living with her not-so-law-abiding uncles, in debt thanks to a credit card-stealing ex-husband and pending grad school loans. I can understand that. Enter the perfect job, a research position that includes room and board, which will allow her to spend her days hunting down rare mysteries for an avid book collector. That sounds like a dream. There's one problem. Her employer, Vera Van Alst, is the most hated citizen of Harrison Falls. Uh-oh. Jordan's first assignment is to track down a rumored Agatha Christie play. It seems easy enough, but Jordan soon finds that her predecessor was killed while looking for it. And there's someone out there willing to murder to keep the play out of Vera's hands. Jordan's new job is, is good, but is it worth her life? I don't know. Is it? We would have to figure it out. Okay, 
last but certainly not least is um, a deadly edits mystery series by Caitlin Dunnett and it's called Crime and Punctuation crime and punctuation. After splurging to buy her childhood home in Catskills, recently widowed Mickey Lincoln emerges from retirement as a freelance editor. We've got a older feisty sleuth, I think, maybe? But not long before Mickey realizes that the village of Lynette Hollow isn't the thriving tourist destination it was decades ago. Not with a murderer on the loose. When perky novice writer Tiffany Scott knocks at her door holding a towering manuscript, Mickey expects another debut novel plagued by typos and sloppy prose. Instead, she finds a murder mystery ripped from the headlines of Lenap's Hollow's not-too-distant past. The opening scene is a graphic page-turner, but it sends a real chill down Mickey's spine after the young author turns up dead, just like the victim in her story. Tell me that I, like, like, tell me that you don't want to read all three of those because I sure as heck want to read all three of those. They all sound flippin' fantastic and I love that they're all different type of bookish and different types of main characters and protagonists. So yeah, those are the three choices for June. You can go and vote. Um, we will be talking next week about Night of the Living Deed and I can't wait to chat with you guys about that one because I have, I have thoughts. I have words. If you guys follow me on Goodreads, you know what I rated it. So, hmm, let's, uh, let's chat next week and uh, may the best book win. But that's the end of this chapter of Courtagonist. Please give this video a thumbs up and subscribe if you haven't already. And until next time, guys, happy reading. Bye!